So for our first application, we're going to cover an automotive part. And you see here, I have, I usually try to show a collection of 3D scanners that may be used for this type of application. And this first one is going to be a oil pan for a vehicle. And as you'll see in a couple moments, this is an object that is sheet metal. And it's an interesting application where we were able to scan this object and use the boundary fit uh, options, which I have previously shown. And this is just another success story using the boundary fit options. And we'll go over how to use that and we'll discuss it here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, boundary fit is one of my favorite tools, as maybe you guys know, and it's really powerful. So let's go ahead and jump over to Design X. So here is the part, as you can see, rotating it around. There's the final CAD. It's helpful to kind of see what the the goal of the presentation is, the final result, and then we'll just kind of roll back as we normally do. And just for everybody's, uh, if you're joining us for the first time, for everyone's sake, the format is, because Design X is a history-based CAD modeler, we bring up these uh success stories these use cases and we roll back and because it's a history-based modeler you can learn a lot from that history i will say that i've learned a ton from just opening other people's files most of my advanced knowledge is just that type of information by opening other people's uh not files and then working with them and seeing how they went about modeling the part and that's how you really accomplish getting into the more advanced surfacing stuff that we've been showing a lot on this webinar is by that sort of thing just being mentored by other people that have used the software so go ahead and roll back and i'll turn on the meshes here So what we've done here with the mesh, before we dive into the modeling portion, the, the mesh processing is often is important to understand as we showed in the last webinar where we took scans and pieced them together and took the in and outside and put them all together. Um, all the different functionality that's there on the mesh side and utilizing those in the modeling. So with this, you'll see we took the original pan, this, which is the thick actual object scanned, we went ahead and copied it, removed things from it, and then removed the entire boundary and extended the boundary of the mesh. So now you can see it with the original pan there. And we're gonna surface this zero thickness mesh with all the holes removed and work with it first and then thicken it to create the part from there so with that we'll go ahead and jump forward and jump forward and you'll see here let's go ahead and turn off this piece and show that one so getting started here you'll see that we went ahead and did a boundary fit. You can go two different ways with this. Um, we, we did a boundary fit surface in this instance. I'll turn it off, but you could also do an auto surface. And I figured today, since this is a basic part, we're not gonna spend most of our time rolling back through this enormous history. Um, what I wanted to do is take a time and show a little bit more of the options for the auto surface and the boundary fit and show those side by side. So first of all, let's just start with the easy one. The easy one is exact surfacing auto surface here. So they could have run with this. Now if no, the, the upside with the auto surface is that it's quick and easy and it will process the mesh into a surface but with this you don't have much control right i'm just taking this mesh and i'm telling it 
wrap surfaces around it, give me what you got, and then we'll go from there. So as you can see, it finished really fast. I feel like we're really good at this type of application. We're one of the first companies to make the auto surface. I believe actually we are the first company to create this auto surface uh, command because we've done this for many, many, many years. And we took that and with not, without any processing, you see, we created that auto surface. Upside, we didn't, uh, I mean, look at it, it took less than a minute. Um, another upside is it is very high resolution. Like it's following this mesh exactly. So if we come over and do a deviation for body, look at, I mean, it's just following. If I roll my mouse over it, it's 0 0.001 millimeters. Like it's crazy, crazy accurate there. And that is a, that can be a disadvantage too. There are times where people just want to smooth out the surface of this object and have these nerve surface come in as lower resolution um, objects. So, you know, that can come into play and be a negative option. So there's auto surface. Um, and then the auto surface, by the way, had two different options, mechanical and organic. And uh, I believe I ran organic this go around. Um, but you can run that as mechanical as well. We'll just see what the difference is here since it was uh, quite fast to do. But you'll see that, again, high resolution, accurate. We could have used that and then did the application that way. But there are advantages to using the um, boundary fit tool. So we'll go ahead and hide that first one. You see the second one is actually more orderly. Um, that is the approach with auto surface. The organic and mechanical, they're just names to give you direction and say, if your part is more organic or more uh, uh, mechanical, then try this. Right, but it's not saying that it has to be done this way or has to be done that way. It's try this one. Sometimes I run into situations where one works better than another, even though it's an organic model and the mechanical one will work. It just depends on what you're doing there. Um, so we just tell you that based on our experience, that's the the two different options there. Um, so there, you see the mechanical one again. It tries to make more structured orderly and then the organic one it's allowed to be more flexible on how it follows the common curvature around the part so it's using the curvature to help it identify where to structure these patches and how to grid them out and make them at least intelligible surface patches right so as you can see that's really good right there um, and then we even have, just for those that love interesting things here, we can even come over to the legacy auto fit surface. And we'll just run that one. And you can actually say feature following and run the legacy auto surface on this. And let's go ahead and run that one and see how that one goes. So you see that we have this older uh, retired one that um, in the future... I'm not going to make any promises here, um, but in the future, this may be coming back in a future tool here that we're excited. We maybe will have an announcement about it here soon is um, using some of this older technology that we have and re-releasing it with uh, some new intelligent uh, surfacing. So just more to come on that and we'll see here. But as you see that ran and look at it has this feature following that does a great job as well. All right, so now let's discuss the boundary fit. So boundary fit is really predicated on this concept of taking the mesh and drawing a curve network all over the surface of the part to then use the boundary fit tool to fill in the patches for you. So it's kind of like a extra manual uh, version of this exact surfacing tool. So we'll go ahead, that is the, this is the sketch that they used. I'm just gonna create another one 
just another 3D mesh sketch and we'll go in and grab this spline tool and I'm just going to draw on the surface and go from there. So I'll go ahead and just draw some patches. And you're just going to draw these 3D splines directly on the mesh here. And normally, if I were doing the whole thing, I'm not breaking them up this small. Right? I actually am going to go... I would go all the way around the outside and then maybe do another a few lanes around the outer out of the outside of the part you know and draw it that way and i accidentally did that but let's just go ahead and use it so like you're drawing this whole curve network here and the orange is going to tell you like hey it's uh, a bounded patch so you know that it's a bounded patch I'm just going to undo that last one, and there we go. So we drew those. And then I can come back after. You'll see here and come in and snap. We'll see how that does there. And draw more here. Now, one rule that I will undo that and make sure that we actually snapped to the curve there. Um, I'll come back. It'll probably be just fine here, but you can do a select all. Get out of this tool, actually, first. Select all and split everything at the intersections here. And you can say I want to do the select all, split everything at the, at the intersections of all these. So that way there are separate splines if you really want to. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is there are occasions where sometimes it will not recognize these properly as patches if they if you had like this one goes all the way around and it's one spline and then this one is broken up into multiple uh, when you go to fit the uh, boundary fit it may not recognize them properly as four-sided patches and stuff so that's why i generally will draw out the network and then just kind of split it at all the junctions and go from there and then you can come over to your uh, legacy boundary fit here and you'll see it recognized it right away as soon as it turns this gray color you'll see that those loops are automatically recognized and i can hit next and then you can dictate what the resolution of each of those patches is so if i wanted to say eight by eight reduce them down and hit ok so now you see that it fit them. That's all that they did here is they went through this entire thing, broke it up into bigger patches than what I just did, just drew all the way around this giant network and drew these four-sided patches all over the part and created that boundary fit that now we're just going to turn all those off and jump forward here. So now we have that boundary fit there. We'll go ahead and jump forward a few steps. We'll go here to extrude. So what? since this is still a surface, we're going to go ahead and kind of work with it as a surface and cut those holes as a surface. So we'll just jump forward a few steps to right about here. Cut all those in. Looks like we might do that a couple more times here. Oh. And then this trim right here, we'll go ahead and turn that on. Nope, not that one. Um, roll back before the trim. Oh, looks like we went ahead and did a, a cleanup trim there. Give it nice, uh, a nice trim all the way around that side. And then we did a trim there. We're using some 3D sketches to do trims around and trim the edge to where we want it to be. So if we turn on the mesh here, we use the uh, the edge of, you can actually extract a spline, this spline right here. 
you see that they went ahead and just drew that following the other not this one but the original right there and then trimmed it off and they yeah there we go so they used that one and then let's go ahead and go into this one and you see here that they drew that one right on the edge and they use that as a trim tool to cut the boundary back. And let's go into, I was just double checking, make sure I didn't miss one of those 3D sketches. So now we're gonna come over to thicken it. So we went ahead and uh, thicken that. And the nice thing about it, since we already had those holes cut, we didn't have to cut them now. You could have waited and done it that as solids if you wanted to. And then you'll see that we go ahead and apply some fillets there. So if you ever need to know where these are, you can just kind of open this up and take a look and see where those fillets are. Right there. So we did some edge fillets to round off those. And then if you come back to deviation, you see they have a really nice looking part here and since it was a part that was a stamped sheet metal you'll see that you know we reverse engineered the top side but it's not going to be exact constant thickness there so really cool application um, sheet metal application using the boundary fit surface